Hey there guys, and welcome back to the Berserker Saga. In this episode, we're predominantly focusing on the road to Barrow's Gloves, and the way we navigate for the correct combat experience in an entirely new and unique fashion. Also, if you discovered this series through my Twitter, a big shout out to all of you. If you want to keep up to date with all the new findings and everything in between, head over to my Twitter, MaulerOSRS, which I'll link in the description and drop me a follow. It only takes two seconds out of your day and greatly helps me release teasers and answer questions to the wider audience more efficiently. Now, with all that said, let's crack on with the nitty gritty and begin the grind for Barra's Gloves. Here I'm knocking out one of the prereqs for Monkey Madness 2, Eyes of Gloffrey. Just a quick reminder that you can talk to the historian on pretty much any account to receive two or more lamps for your efforts questing. I still have one more lamp to come back to collect, which has been strategically routed. Now I'm not actually too sure if any of you have actually noticed this, but my inner QA analyst has come out and realised that Longbow Ben in fact doesn't even have a longbow. What's going on there Jagex? Fix your bloody game. With Fossil Island now accessible, we also unlock another bank booth and access to fossil training in the future. Now you will come to see that there are a few quests that do give hidden experience rewards including 40 attack XP for killing the following Ice Lord and 40 XP from the completion of Rage in Tolnitz Rift. This isn't at all necessary in routing as it is only 80 experience but I like to be completely thorough with my attack and defense experience respectively. Eagle's Peak is always great to knock out as early as possible when working towards 60 Hunter for Monkey Madness 2. Now I might get back into this in future episodes, if you lads are keen, I can chuck a timer on screen and start speedrunning each individual quest like back in the day, just throwing it out there as a suggestion, just let me know in the comment section below if you're keen, and that is something that I can definitely get amongst. Moving on with the once more favour trio is truly the embodiment of the previous clip. Taking a quick intermission between the trio quests, this could be a little help for lower level Ironmen as an alternative to anti-poison that spawns in the observatory ruins. Running through the hand quest saga is essential for the end game content as this account will eventually need the ancient mace for boosting our prayer so we can do the quests like legends and so on and so forth. This will in turn give us access to the completion of Dragon Slayer 2 and all the amenities of a Zerker with only 40 defense. Another quest knocked out, necessary for Monkey Madness 2 completion. Committing crime on RuneScape? No way. Just a quick tip for one small favour, damage is cut if the game recognises that you aren't hitting with a pickaxe, so if you switch the pickaxe before the hit splats, your regular damage will be calculated. One small favour is also essential for the completion of Legends Quest in the future. So let me know if you guys are in the same wavelength as me here. Questing is pretty much an essential part of every build, but once you actually get into a couple quests, you really know that you're in that mood. You'll do as many quests as possible in one sitting because you know for a fact that you won't do them in the future. I think it would be quite interesting to see how many people have the same type of playstyle. A 
quickly completing Zoga Flesh Eaters so I can get on to Chompy Bird Hunting later into the game. So I actually chose the pickpocket option on the Master Farmer on accident and decided to log off for the night due to the cooldown. Log back in in the morning to find out the cooldown goes off in game time, so I had to wait another 15 minutes until I could kick on with the bloody quest. An actual nightmare. Fairy Tale Part 1 is another quest that I have routed into my attack log before 50 attack. It looks to me like we've found some compelling evidence of Chessbri's recent whereabouts. Now imagine how broken this would be if this worked on a Slayer task. <laughs> with the completion of Watchtower quests, that's one of the last of the essentials complete, and that leaves us with just a bunch of quests to tick off to meet the 175 quest point requirement for Barrow's Gloves. And just an interesting wee tidbit about the Haunted Mine is that you can actually get buffed by the minecarts and still have the ability to log out in combat. And it has something to do with the weird damage property that still lets you log for whoever knows what reason why. The cool thing about the Salvami and Bue is that we've already completed the Slayer Ring, so we can completely skip the maze and go straight onto the boss fight with absolute efficiency. I remember thinking that this quest was actually pretty annoying, I may have just gotten super lucky on the movement patterns of the sheep or something. Wait a second, did I just go invisible? I swear down, these are some of the classic memorable moments in questing I always enjoy doing. Not gonna lie, I 100% forgot to sprinkle the cinnamon on the brulee at least twice before I even realised. At least, with that, knocks out the final quest before the final boss. Now here's a quick showcase of the dragon gloves, which in my opinion actually looks a bit cooler than the barrow's gloves. What do you guys think? Now as for my gear, I've gone extremely suboptimal because I have actually DC'd before with the classic New Zealand ping and lost over 20 mil in the cutscene back in the day, so rather be safe than sorry. Most of these fights are fairly simple, to be fair I should be in melee range or melee distance, but it doesn't really matter because you can actually bank between fights. The big fiery flambe is one of the more annoying NPCs in the instance as it removes your weaponry if you don't have the ice gloves, so to tackle this you use projectiles and run around the circumference of the map. The following two are just like the first NPC, stay as close to or in melee distance and out DPS the freezers with constant clicks to regain aggression. For the Gelatinoth Mother, bring all different attack styles to deal with her different phases. She is amongst the hardest of the lot and can deal fairly hefty damage, so be careful and keep your HP as high as possible at all times. Thank you to all of those who've stuck out to the end. 
As always, you're greatly appreciated. This episode was heavily oriented towards questing for Barrow's Gloves, with little to no variation. However, the following episode you'll have a lot more variety to look forward to. Once again, if you haven't already checked out my Twitter, I'll display it up on screen and link it in the description. This is where you'll find exclusive trailers and previews to my upcoming videos. What you see playing in the background is an iteration of the intro you've seen at the start of the video, but with more editing and an amazing soundtrack, so I advise that you go and watch that. Furthermore, if you want to contribute towards my overall well-being, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. This takes less than two seconds and just think about it, you'll be contributing to my personal economic contribution to society. Yeah, that's a lot of contributions. And finally, with all that being said, thank you all again, and until next time, take it easy.